Hello conventioneers and welcome to the January 2020 Virtual Dog Convention. I'm delighted to be here to be able to present to you again. This is one of the highlights of my year. Since our last convention and time together, I've spent some time gathering and collecting new Stife dolls to my collection. And these wonderful dolls are relatively rare and relatively unusual, so I'd like to share them with you because Really, when you think about it, it's Stife, it's boys, it's dolls. It doesn't get much better than that. I've arranged them in chronological order, going from the newest to the oldest, because we all would like to go back in time and be a little younger, to talk to you about how the designs have changed and what makes these designs so interesting and so beautiful. All right, so let's dig right in. So the first item that I have received in my collection in the last couple of months is this little cowboy whose name is Boy, and Boy is um, 17 centimeters, and he is very typical to Stife's early 1950s post-war production. He has a rubber head and um, a cloth body. He was also produced in 12 centimeters, all in rubber, and I'll give you an example of what that would look like. But what makes this so interesting and so extraordinary is that he's got all his accessories. And you know how it is when you get a doll or a bear and it has things and bits and pieces, they tend to fall off and such. But this little guy still has his belt, his gun, which fits into this little holster. He has his neckerchief, wonderful felt outfit, cotton shirt, cowboy hat and such. What generally tends to happen with these pieces from the 50s is the rubber tends to get a little soft and melty, but this guy's in pretty good condition. He's got a few cracks on his face. He sort of looks like an old drunk uncle, but that's a Stife cowboy, and he's really nice. And Stife also made this design in this pattern, which is a sailor, and I wanted to share this with you just so you could get a better idea of his body, as you can see. He's got jointed arms and unjointed legs, but he has the same face. And that's the sailor, and this is the cowboy. And although I don't have the little cowboy to show you, I wanted to show you what he would look like. This is the, centi this is the 17 centimeter size, this is the 12 centimeter size of an analogous product. His body is entirely rubber and tends to dry out, but you can see the size and scale of this piece. And so he's lovely, and he appeared with a pony in the FAO Schwartz catalog as an exclusive in the mid-50s, so it's a wonderful piece. So that is our 50s piece. Now I'd like to move on to something, believe it or not, our smallest piece today has the biggest scandal associated with it. This little guy is called Sulfur Mate. And Sulfur Mate was made from 1936, excuse me, 1933 through 1936. And what's so adorable about him? Look at his wonderful size, he's adorable. His body is sort of like a big flat coin. His Shoes are clogs. We love clogs around here, being from Cambridge. They come off. They're adorable. Outfit is integral to his body. He has this little cap, which is also glued on, and a wonderful mohair beard. And you can see on the other underside, perhaps, it was tipped in orange originally, which is sort of a fun color mohair combination seen in the late 20s and early 30s. And you can see he's got his seamed face and little googly black and uh, black and white eyes. Looks a little lensy-ish if you think about it. And so this piece, he was made in this size, which is the, um, the 14 centimeter. But he was also made in this larger size, which is a little more common, but I wanted you to see the two of them, how they compare. They don't, they sort of scale up and sort of don't. This bigger guy has tricolored eyes and this guy has two black and white eyes. But the funny story behind this guy, the little guy is very rare, is that this pattern was submitted to a company, a, a, a hotel chain in Germany. And it was their little logo. It's, they said, Stife, can you make us our little logo um, in 3D as, in, as only Stife could? And Stife did, and the company did not like the, the, the prototype. So the deal was off. And so they put the prototype into the archives. And one day, one of the members of the Stife development team, I think maybe even was a member of the family, saw the sample in the archives and said, that's so cute, we should definitely make it, not realizing the understory that it was not accepted by a customer. So they made this for a couple of years, and the company found out that Stife was making this not under their brand, 
and sue them. So this guy is a little bit illegal, and Stife had to pay the company whose brand this was um, all of the proceeds from their sales of this guy. And Stife went on to make another little gnome like this um, called Lucky Dog uh, shortly after, I believe, in the, in the 19, late 1930s or so. This, this particular design represents one of the very last seamed faces that Stife made. After these seamed faces, Stife went to a pressed felt model, but this is probably your last or one of the last dolls designed with this wonderful pattern. But isn't he adorable? He's precious. And I love a little scandal, don't you? So he likes to hang out with a fox. Okay. Now we're going to time travel back to 1912. 1912. And what we have here was a find that really took my breath away because I didn't even know this existed until I did some research on it. This here is a 50 centimeter Stife French cavalry soldier. I said that right. From that's supposed to look like he's in an alpha from the, the early 1900s. And what you see about him, which is so outstanding, he is with his pony, which is not original to him, but he seems to like him a lot. I'm going to put him to the side for a second. So I wanted to show you why this is so wonderful and so unusual. First of all, he's very handsome. He's a ginger prince, and you know how I feel about that. When you take his hat off, which is removable, you can see this wonderful kind of cinnamony hair and a matching mustache. Everybody loves a man with a mustache. Beautiful blue and black pupil eyes. But if you look at his outfit, it's really extraordinary and it very closely mirrors that of a French cavalry soldier in the early 1900s. And what you're going to see are these fabulous leather boots with soles and you could actually ride a horse in them. Cavalry means, of course, riding on a horse. Wonderful red felt joppers. See right here? Big. Not so you can eat more dessert, but so you can sit on your horse. A fitted jacket, wonderfully detailed. He still has, this is breathtaking, these wonderful epaulets on his shoulders which are connected with a button and are fringed as you would see. Just really beautiful and very typical to a 1912 design, sort of in the middle between sort of a charactered type of design and more, more, more with realistic proportions, but he's absolutely fabulous and utterly charming. And of course, oops, I almost forgot, his crowning glory, literally, is this hat. So the cavalry soldiers are known for their hats. You see with the partial chin strap and the plume, which is kind of like an early woolen miniature. It's all original to him. I can't believe he was able to survive this long with all these great pieces. But this is your French cavalry soldier from 1912. That particular time period, Stife was making a number of military dolls representing different countries across Europe and even the United States. All right, now we're going to move on to something a little more fun and games. This wonderful fellow, his name is Green. And Green is part of a series of dolls Stife made from about 1911 or 1910 through the late teens. He, as you probably have pulled, thought about, is part of a circus. He is part of a, the Stife Circus display. And he is what they call a lackey or an attendant. And he would work with all members of the circus to make sure it was running smoothly. And what's fascinating about him, I could just start at the bottom and work up, or, back, or vice versa, he's in gorgeous condition. He, his, even though his name is Green, it is my best guess that Stife named these circus characters after the real people they were meant to represent. So it's quite possible a man named Green looked like this or had these kind of characteristics or wore this outfit. His outfit is integral to his body, which means you can't take it off, which is one reason it survives so beautifully. And I'll start at the bottom. He's got these wonderful spats. He's got the huge feet, which are typical to the period. And you can see wonderful felt beaded black pants, fully jointed. This fabulous vest and jacket. I'll show you all sides of it. It's just wahoo good. Don't you want to take him to a prom with you, ladies? He's just so adorable and beautiful, fully jointed. He also has his mustache, blue eyes, very contemplative look. I suspect his hair was brown because the underside of his mohair is a little brownish. Uh, sometimes brown mohair fades to a silvery tip, like a lot of handsome men do. So anyway, this is green. He is wonderful. And I got green from a family in Europe who contacted me about him. And unlike most 
doll purchases that I make, or, or purchases, I actually keep in touch with the family because we both love this item so much, and I'm certain they'll be seeing this video and very, very proud of their handsome boy who's crossed the pond into my collection and into the world of the virtual doll convention. All right, now we're going on to another area that I just love. I think being German and, and just loving all things very culturally related to doll legacy in Germany, we have here a wonderful doll, and his name is Snick. Okay, and so Snick was made from about 1911 through 1921, at least the first version of this wonderful doll. And let me walk you. Through, oops, I know. Let me walk you through what makes him so great. Now you can't help but notice. Look at these fabulous clogs. They're just beautiful. Dance, go take a look. They're leather with nails and soles. I mean, they're like you really could wear these because that's because. Controls are in the garden. These are gardening clogs. I want you to take a look at his feet. Look at those feet. Fat, chunky feet, like little toddler feet. Wonderful to hold the clogs. His outfit is fully removable, so it's very unusual to find a piece in um, all original or almost original condition. I think this belt is not original, but everything else is. What's really interesting about this doll is that because it was produced during the World War I era, fabrics were became available and not available, and it was kind of an inconsistent um, flow of materials. So you're going to find these dolls in a variety of different materials. Like this is velvet, which is which would be typical to to uh, the World War I era. These, this could be felt at some point. This is felt. This is a, an inexpensive linen material. This could be a, a nicer calico on other examples. But he's just beautiful and lovely. Look at this eyes set in eye pockets. And a wonderful profile pocket mouth. And one of the things that's so cool about this guy is that unlike um, these other folks with mustaches and facial hair, these are sort of built into their bodies. This is actually inserted, like one inserts, like one would um, hook a rug. So every little strand is placed in, and you can see he's got his eyebrows and his beard and his wonderful face. And isn't that fabulous? Look how adorable he is. And he has got his little hat, which is original to him. He's just fabulous. So what's very interesting about this particular piece is that uh, for some reason, the, the the gnomes and the dwarves are very were very appealing to the audiences of a pre-war. So Steiff produced this through 1921, and then starting in the mid 20s, produced uh, another version of this doll, also called him Snick. But what you, what the difference is, I want to show you one of the differences is that you see this guy's hat whoop, comes off. The later one, prepare to fall in love again, has a wonderful hat with ear pockets. You see that? Ladies and gentlemen, so it was less likely to lose the hat. And they're very similar in design. This was produced in four sizes. This was produced in three sizes with some very oops, with some very light design differences. But you can see how beloved these are and why these would be in the line for a really long time. And so I found this guy in a catalog at the turn of last century. I think it was 1911 or 1912. And if you do the price comparisons of what he was listed then and what he would sell for now, in uh, the, about 1911 or 1912, he sold for over $92 in a catalog. So Steiff was never inexpensive. Steiff was always designed for a high quality, high price point. So he would have been over $90 at the time of his uh, sale in the 19-teens. He's great. I love him. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the oldest doll in my collection and probably one of the oldest dolls I've ever handled. So this little guy is 28 centimeters. And he was produced from 1904 through the mid-1920s. And this little guy is called, uh, is one of the, the characters from a cartoon, a turn of last century cartoon, American cartoon, called Foxy Grandpa. And Foxy Grandpa told the story of this old grandpa and his uh, nephew, I think they were grandsons, who did all this mischief and it was fun, but all's well that ends well. A very typical cartoon strip that you would see at the turn of last century. And so I've got a lot of inspiration for the dolls from turn of last century cartoons, and this is one of them. So here you see the boy. And let me show you what makes him so interesting and so old. First of all, he is very simple. You notice he, I mean this lovingly, he's sort of, sort of a more primitive design, a more basic design. Um, starting bottom head up, he's got the very typical shoes, they're felt. Huge feet. Early Steiff dolls are known for their extreme proportions. This is a very good example of a character doll. So notice how big the feet are. His body is entirely made of velvet. Isn't that interesting? And fully jointed. 
but the clothes are integral to his body. You can't take them off. It's just probably one of the reasons they're still with us. This belt is original, which is so cool, and his buckle. And his tie is original, and his shirt. And you can see a very simple face with black button eyes, center seam, painted features and such, an inset mohair wig. And you can see where his button would be. I believe this guy's from about maybe like 1909. The earliest one I've ever seen or know of was from 1904. His design was very, very similar. He was string jointed, which makes perfect sense given that these were launched in uh, 1904. And he had an elephant button, but interestingly, his elephant button was on his tie and not in his ear. So it's a miracle it survived. But uh, that one sold in uh, 2010 at Sotheby's, excuse me, at Christie's for 2,500 pounds. So that's, a, that's a, a pretty penny. This is nowhere of that caliber, but he is certainly of that design. Simple hands and such. So those are my boys, and I'm so happy to welcome them to my family. I would like you just to see how the designs have evolved, and not so much over time. They are just a wonderful example, a handful, of the wonderful intersection of Steiff, dolls, and men. And men, as you can see, made up a significant portion of the Steiff line pre-war. Well, that's what I have for you today. I want to thank you a million times over for your interest. From my house to yours, virtual doll conventioners, Teddy hugs, and thank you so much.